Hi folks, I'm Brennan Burns and I'm joined today by Robert Kaplan. He is a senior associate dean and a professor at Harvard Business School, also the author of What You're Really Meant to Do. So thanks so much for taking the time today. Thanks for having me, Brennan. So my first question is, saw a pretty, uh, a pretty disturbing Gallup poll recently that said 70% of workers are disengaged from their job. If you had to tell them one thing, what's, what's the first thing they should do today to maybe turn that around and really start enjoying what they do or maybe find a new path? Uh, for, for starters, uh, I would ask everybody who's doing a job, make a list of what you love about the job and what you hate about the job, uh, and try to think, is there a way uh, in what you're doing either to change the mix in your current job to more what you love, or are there ways to move within your company, or if necessary, even outside your company, to do something that you love? Mm -hmm. And here's why. Uh, high performance is closely linked with passion and engagement. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the passion is the rocket fuel that drives high performance. Mm -hmm. And so disengagement in your job is not going to kill you, but it means you're basically under undershooting your potential. And so it's worth people to try to find ways to address that. Mm -hmm. And it may involve making a taking a step sideways or backward to move forward. It's possible. Yeah. You write in the book about people should create their own definition of success. What are a couple of ways that they can do that? Well, the reason I say this, most of us would agree with that statement completely, mm -hmm. okay? And then what we don't realize, we're not fully uh, even uh, aware of, is how much peer pressure, uh, societal norms, popular media, and all that stuff mm -hmm. uh, helps us create a definition that really isn't our own. And we're so bombarded with it that sometimes we can't, we can't tell the difference between what we think and what the world thinks. Mm. So for starters, be aware of that. Start thinking of situations then when, where you were at your best, when you were happiest, where you performed at a high level, you were great, uh, you felt great. What were you doing? Mm. And try to think about uh, what does that mean for what you might love to do. Now, a lot of people say, oh, that sounds great for you, but I can't do that. Uh, you know, I've got obligations and I've got pressures. And the reality is people have a million reasons why you can't do that or excuses not to do that. Mm -hmm. And all I'm saying, you've got to, you've got to at least be, try to think about it and be aware of it. Because you know why? Next week, an opportunity may come to you. Mm -hmm. And if you've thought about it, it may be the difference between you jumping on it and not and just obliviously letting it pass because mm -hmm. you've thought about what you might love. Yeah. How does one properly assess their strengths and weaknesses? I think I think sometimes it's hard to look inside yourself and say this is what I'm good at, this is what I'm bad at. What's the best way to do that? Well, this is hard and I'll, I'll, and it's hard work. And most people can probably describe their strengths not always, but often, mm -hmm. uh, but they have a hard time uh, articulating their weaknesses. And, and so, for starters, first is mindset. Own it. It is your responsibility to be able to write down your strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It's not somebody else's job. A lot of people think it's their boss's job or their company's obligation to tell you what you're not good at, and I'd prefer not to know about it. Mm -hmm. I would say change your mindset. You need to own it. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, that's number one. Number two, you need to seek the advice and observations of people who see you every day mm -hmm. to learn what your weaknesses are. That may, that's going to mean going to them and say, can you give me a suggestion on one or two things I need to improve on? Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not want to ask that question. It's going to be painful. It's like going to the dentist. They know they need to go, but they prefer not to. Mm -hmm. But part of the mindset, if you own it, you're going to ask. And I found if people are aware of their strengths and weaknesses, that is nine-tenths of the battle. It may not mean improving on your weaknesses, but if you're aware of them, strengths and weaknesses, I think you're going to be able to manage the way you delegate, who, what kinds of environments you get into, mm -hmm. who you maybe even have on your team. You're going to be a lot more effective. And a lot of us go through life or for years where we just are, have blind spots we don't know. Mm -hmm. you got to seek feedback. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people are not in the habit of doing that. Mm -hmm. They they love it in concept, but they can't bring themselves to do it. Yeah. So you think, write down a list of your strengths, weaknesses, and then what? Do you try to match this up with what you're most passionate well, about? Well, first of all, there? so I break it down. First, diagnose it. Mm -hmm. Awareness. Don't worry about what you're going to do about it. So focus on the di on what, what the facts are. So that means write it down, 
seek observations of people who work with you, feedback from people who work with you regularly and mm -hmm. observe you, and then see if you got a good grip on it. Then finish that. A lot of people never do the analysis because they say, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? Quit my job? I, I, you know, f don't worry about it yet. Mm -hmm. Be aware of it. Then think about what, if anything, you ought to do and how you ought to do it. But separate those things. Don't find excuses not to even do the analysis or ask the question. Yeah. And a lot of people wrap up action with analysis. And because they do it, they say, ah, forget it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't do any of it. I, it's not realistic. Don't do that. Separate them. Yeah. I know you give a lot of advice also to recent graduates looking for a job. Um, what's some advice that you can give to them and what are some of them doing wrong? Obviously it's a tough job market right now, but how can they, how can they get out there, um, you know, sell themselves a little bit better and what, what should they avoid doing? So we talked about strengths and weaknesses and you talked about engagement. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to think about what you have a passion for. Okay. What kind of things do you love to do? I mentioned it earlier. When were you at your best? What tasks were you performing? What was the environment? Why is this important? When you're in a job interview, and I can tell you as someone who's interviewed thousands of people over the years, mm -hmm. if somebody is enthusiastic and passionate about the job, right. well, that's impressive. Yeah, it comes through. Yeah, it mm -hmm. comes through. And so a lot of people think you can go in there and uh, in a job in a job interview in something you're not passionate about and pretend you're passionate. They get that it comes right through. So. Think about in advance what you're passionate about and try to match that to the job you're about to interview for or to other prospective jobs. Mm -hmm. And then focus on that in the interview. Mm -hmm. And you're going to come across as much more, uh, better fit. And a lot, and people, people want to hire people that are excited about coming sure. to do what they do. Yeah. You also were previously chairman of the Golden Sachs, uh, Pine Street leadership program. Could you talk about some ways leaders can be more effective and some traits that you would look yeah. for in a leader? So here's my definition of leadership. And the reason I, I it's, it's pretty audacious of me to even bother to have a definition, mm -hmm. but I've learned this is one term that nobody knows the mean, nobody knows what leadership is. Mm -hmm. Now you'd say, no, no, that's not true. We're talking no. about it all the time. We're in Washington and we have a leadership shortage. If I pulled a hundred people, ask them to find the term leadership, I can tell you from experience, I'll get a hundred different definitions. Mm. So that's a problem because when you become a leader, then what am I supposed to do? Right. I mean, nobody agrees on what it is. Am I supposed to give orders? Am I supposed to ask questions? Am I supposed to get people to follow me? Am I supposed to inspire people? Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to be a good follow? Uh, you know, a lot and in some industries, a lot of people think if you make a lot of money, then you're a good leader. Right. Okay. How am I supposed to do that? I have no idea. <laughs> so here's what we, here's the way I would define it. Leadership has three parts. And we tried to talk about this. I talk about this when I teach, but I also talked about it a lot at Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. Can you figure out what you believe if you were, as if you were the owner? Not as, not as somebody who's just criticizing someone else. You could have done this, that. No, that, that's not what I'm talking about. If you were in charge mm -hmm. and anything that you wanted to happen could happen, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Now, half the time, I don't know. I can't answer that question. But in the business I was in, investment banking, that's what you need to think about when you're advising the CEO. What would I do if I were the CEO? Mm -hmm. So what would you do, number one? Number two, can you act on it? Meaning, you figure out what you believe. Are you willing to speak up? I can't tell you how many meetings I've been with people over the years. After we've made a decision that got all screwed up, they come up to me and say, you know, I would have never done that, right. or I was always against it, or I didn't think that bias, was going right? to work. And so while I'm strangling them, I'm saying to them, <laughs> uh, I'm saying, why didn't you speak up? And people have a million reasons why they didn't. Mm -hmm. Leaders act. Mm -hmm. Now they have to use good sense and they have to have interpersonal skills and you have to engage others. But the second thing is you got to act. And then the third thing is, can you figure out what you believe? Can you act on it in a way that adds value to someone else? Mm -hmm. This is not about how do you help yourself. This is how do you help a customer or a client or build an organization or your community. Mm -hmm. Leaders focus on somebody else mm -hmm. and they're willing to help others. So what I did at Goldman Sachs in Pine Street and what I teach at Harvard Business School is how do you do those three things? And by the way, those doing those three things are not easy right. and you're still going to make a lot of dumb mistakes and you're still going to struggle. And then there's all sorts of skills that you need to develop mm -hmm. to do those things. And we're trying to help people 
learn those skills. Are there any leaders that you look at out there that are that are really adept at doing these things that yeah. maybe other leaders can take cues oh, and yeah. just look at them and learn from them? Let me tell you, people say we have a leadership shortage in this country. Not that I can see, hmm. no. The, I see thousands of people doing this from the, the parent, the single parent watching this program to a military person serving in Afghanistan, to the policeman or woman, to yes, the entrepreneur, mm -hmm. the CEO. Uh, I see people every day doing this, and the people listening to this interview, I think, know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. On the, by the same token, I see lots of people who are responsible for thousands who are not doing this. Mm -hmm. They are decent managers, but they, they have a hard time worrying. They're more interested in thinking what other people want, think they should do, as opposed to what they believe. Right. And they've gotten bad habits on that front. They're afraid to act. Worried about making a mistake. And they're more worried about themselves than adding value to others. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so there are lots of leaders uh, that are great. And I, I throw out some big corporate leaders. Terry Lundgren, who runs Macy's, mm -hmm. is a great example. I think Mitch Daniels, was in, when he's governor of Indiana, whether you agree with his politics or not, he was a superb leader who followed these steps. Mm -hmm. And I talk a lot about vision, priorities, and alignment, which is the other way to talk about this. How do we add value? What's distinctive about us? And do we align the organization to do it? And those are two leaders that have done it. But I could rattle off 25 others yeah. who do a good job. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we notice in The Motley Fool is some of the best performing companies as stocks are some of the strongest corporate cultures. Yeah. Also, we think there's a correlation there. Yes. How important is it for the company to be responsible for developing, b developing an employee, making their employees happy, putting their top performers in the most important roles? And how much of it is the individual's responsibility to really seek that out? Well, here's what the great companies do. And, it, and it, sometimes it takes years to show up in their earnings and stock price. Right. You know, normally earnings, I've learned earnings, uh, money, and stock price are an outcome mm -hmm. that sometimes is a result of years of effective leadership. Sure. Okay, but what is a great, what do the great companies do? And there are a lot of them that do this. Number one, they have all sorts of pro programs to coach employees, help them be at their best, mm -hmm. make sure they understand their, their skills, their passions, and put them in the right job. But I gotta tell you, they also have a culture where they talk to, to young employees as they come in day one and say, this is your responsibility too. Mm -hmm. You own this as much as we do. We'll do all sorts of things to help you. But the great companies say to young people, you've got to own this and we want you to act like owners of your career. Mm -hmm. It is your job to reach your potential. It is our job to help you reach your potential. And so if you, both sides have that attitude, you create a learning environment mm -hmm. and you're much more likely to have an effective company. Yeah. So you mentioned it's you want to, mainly the individual's responsibility to reach their true potential. How and do, the, co and it, the companies to help them. Right. But how does an individual effectively do that? What, what are some ways if someone's watching out there, how, so, how do I reach my true potential? So this is what I write about in my book, mm -hmm. uh, what you're really meant to do. There, there are a series of steps you go through. Strengths and weaknesses, uh, passions, understand your story, which we could talk a lot about, mm -hmm. values and boundaries, uh, building relationships with others, um, acting like an owner. Um, there are a whole series of steps, and the point of this is there isn't an answer. Mm -hmm. It's not a destination you get to. And I joke around that, that reaching your potential is a lot like losing weight or getting in shape. You have to do a series of things to lose weight or get in shape. There's not just one thing. And what, what I write about in this book is the whole series of steps you need to take. And then what I say is work at it. Mm -hmm. You'll never get there. Yeah. And for many of you, after you read this book, you'll be on, this will make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. In the same way, getting in shape will make you sore. Yeah. You got to use muscles you're not used to using. Because why do people fail to reach their potential? Normally, two big reasons, isolation and inability to learn, hmm. okay? You, you, are, you, uh, you don't think about these issues systematically. You don't seek advice. You don't, sometimes you don't even want to hear it, mm -hmm. and you become isolated. Everyone around you knows what your issues are except for you. Right. And so this book is written for people who want to break through that isolation, are open to learning about themselves. Great. Well, it's a fascinating book, What You're Really Meant to Do. Robert Kaplan, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you. Good thank to you. talk to you. Great. 